Hi, I wanted to make a short video about how to work with loan values in Excel. And in my current Math 123 course, this would be in Section 11 of our book. And the thing I don't like about Section 11 is it seems like we take a really long time to get to the point. That's great when you're in a four hour face to face class. It's a little bit harder if you're taking a short version of the course or if you just want to look back and figure out, OK, what is the pertinent information from that section? So I've put it together in one slide. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So to get loan values, we need some information up front. If you were to go get a loan today, you would have to have certain terms and conditions, as they would say in the financial world. So those terms would include what's the APR on this loan? Remember, APR stands for annual percentage rate, right? So the total yearly percentage rate that they're going to charge you an interest because trust me they're not giving you the money for free another important term would be the number of periods in other words how long are you going to have this loan is it going to be a five-year car loan is it going to be a 30-year mortgage or something else and notice i didn't just say years here i called it the number of periods and what i mean by that would be the number of years times how many periods in that year you're going to make payments. So for most loans, it's gonna be a monthly payment. So maybe a five-year car loan that you pay monthly, five times 12, that's 60 payments. So we'll call that our number of periods. Well, I'm leaving out the big one. If I'm gonna think about loan values, I need a dollar value. But there's two dollar values that are associated with the loan. So we're gonna talk about this in both directions. So one direction would be, how much am I borrowing? How much am I borrowing for that car or that house? Or we could take the approach of thinking about our payment, especially if you are car shopping. You might start by going to the car dealership and saying, I have this much money to put down and I can afford $250 a month car payments. What can I afford to shop for? So now you don't have to rely on the car dealer or the bank manager to figure out those numbers. We have simple tools in Excel that we can use. There's actually two functions depending on which direction you are looking at this information. So if we're looking from the top down, if we know how much do I want to borrow, I've figured out an APR and a number of periods. Maybe I've researched those online or maybe my bank has already told me what APR they're going to give me for a certain length. If I have those three top pieces of information, I would take those three inputs and input them into an Excel function called PMT. And it does exactly what it sounds like, PMT, that's short for payment. So the three inputs are the APR, the number of periods, the amount being borrowed, and then that's gonna spit out how much your payment is going to be each period. So probably a monthly payment uh, for most of us. Now we can also look at this the other direction though. What if I know how much I can afford to pay and I have an APR and number of periods? So going from the bottom up, PMT has a sister function that's very similar. You input though the APR, the number of periods and then the amount of each payment. Those three inputs will result in an output with your PV, which stands for present value, the present value of money they would loan you. So it will spit out the amount of a loan you would get with those three inputs. All right, in this video, I'm not going to show doing that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We have other videos you can watch for just typing that information into Excel. So let's pretend I've used one of those functions. I have all of this information now, all of the pieces. Let's use our quantitative reasoning to think more about that loan. So we'll typically ask some additional questions in our quantitative reasoning course about these loan values. The first question we may ask is, how much do you pay total on the loan? Don't confuse this with how much you're borrowing. So you may be borrowing $10,000 for a car, but guess what? That's not what you pay back to the bank. Why not? That interest rate, that APR, they want something in return for loaning you money. So how do I figure out the total paid? Super easy. I just take the amount of each payment 
and then I multiply by the number of periods. So if I pay $250 a month on my car loan, it's a five year loan that I pay monthly, I would take 250 times five years times 12 months per year, and that's going to get how much I pay total for the cost of the car. And that number is going to be bigger than what we borrowed. Why is it bigger? Interest. So how do I calculate interest when I have these values? It's actually really easy. It's just a subtraction problem. I'm going to take that total amount that we've paid and I'm going to subtract off the original amount we borrowed. Now there's lots of little details in there in each one of our questions. If you're not someone who's great at details, you need to slow down, write down the information, highlight the information. So for instance, the amount being borrowed may be different than the total you're going to pay for the house or the car because maybe you had an additional down payment value. Uh, I kept talking about monthly in this video. Mm -hmm. There might be a loan that's something different than monthly, although monthly is the typical uh, one that we use. And I didn't show exactly how to input these things into Excel, but there are some rules in Excel like prohibited use of dollar signs, optional use of percent symbols, commas are something important in the programming. So again, you may want to watch the other videos for more details, but this is section 11 in a nutshell. There's really not that much to it if you just think through it with common sense. All right, good luck on your section 11 homework. I hope you found this helpful.